Hi Nika, Eric here. I know I've been bugging you over the last few months, either through Twitter or through Facebook, to uh, see if you ever had a chance to read the story I wrote about uh, my adventure to come see you in San Francisco earlier this year. And unfortunately you hadn't been able to. Uh, so after Steffi came up with her idea for the fan box, through her prompting and some of my other Nika family, uh, many of whom have already done some videos in your fan box for you, uh, they said I should do the story here, and so um, I will be doing the story uh, for you here. Uh, now, it is, it's way too long to do in one setting, so uh, this will be broken out into a few parts over the next several weeks. Um, hopefully, you have an opportunity to come back and watch them as they're put out, or sometime once they're all done, you have a chance to sit down and watch them all the way through. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it at some point. Uh, but uh, without going into any further, let me go ahead and start uh, the story for you. So hopefully you enjoy it, and hopefully your fans get a kick out of it uh, at some level. These are tales from a newly de-virginized Nika fan, or how music helps heal the soul. The date was June 22, 2011. The venue, the Independent. The location, San Francisco, California. Did that just happen? There is no way that Nika Costa uttered those words on her stage at my first ever live Nika show. The words she just laid out on the funked out crowd? Eric Armstrong. June 22, 2011 will always be a special day for me. One I will remember for as long as I have the wits about me to do so. So just how exactly does my name come out of Nika Funk and Costa's mouth? I've never been exceptionally cool. Frankly, I'm just a big, geeky dork. I try to find the fun in life. I try to laugh at myself and get others to laugh at themselves. I try my best to navigate this life and help me and my kids make sense of a world turned upside down by personal pain and loss. Gee, that's great, Eric, but we don't care about that. We just want to know how, about how cool the show was and how your name came to be stated on stage. All right, look, for those of you who don't want all the tales, for those of you who just want to get to the good stuff, for those who only want to get it on and on, come back when I get to the part about the independent. But remember, everyone, there's beauty in the way we hesitate. So let's dive on in and explore head first into the journey that led to the independent. My early history with Nika. I discovered Nika around the release of her 2005 album, Can't Never Did Nothing. Now, you would think with this tale, I would remember exactly how I got turned on to her, but I can't. I don't recall if a friend suggested it, I don't recall if I just got off a CD club at the time, I don't recall if I just liked the album cover, but what I do recall is being mesmerized by the opening wow. Wow! <laughs> Due to the events at the time of my life, the back-to-back -back tracks of Fooled You Baby and I Gotta Know were played and repeated consistently. And after that, I would just let the disc run over and over again. I cannot express how much I love this disc. After a bit of time, I wanted to see if there's anything else out there. What? She had a disc that came out in 2001? How'd I miss this? I searched a bit for it, couldn't find it, figured, oh well, I'll follow her, check out her next album she puts out, try to catch her at a show. Then this tends to happen... Even with those discs and songs that you love so much, you do eventually listen to something else. And the CNDN passed out of rotation and out of mind for a long time. Sorry, Nika, don't have Jesus beat me, please. Then life happened, and for the most part, sadly, music itself was fairly limited. It wasn't until years later I discovered rediscovered my love for CNDN, probably around the end of 2009, and I found out that she'd released another album, which means she was probably on the road too, and I missed it. Damn! As much as I love seeing the end and as much as I wanted to get her older albums, I just never got around to it. How can this guy be a Nika fan? And how can he go from this to June 22, 2011? Well, the rest of the story is coming soon. 